Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? What's up, Johnny? What's going on, my friend? Finally feeling a little better. It's been a rough, uh, rough week. Well, that's good to hear. I, I was actually going to ask you how you were feeling. I know you were uh, dealing with some things. Uh, just tired. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad to hear you're doing better. Yep. Well, you are you are looking better. Yeah, I I'm telling you, that COVID just kicked my butt big time. Yeah, we I have another client that got COVID, and ten days later, they're still testing positive. Twelve days later, still testing positive. 15 days later, he's still testing positive. Oh. So he's supposed to go on this big vacation and he can't go because they won't let him out. Of, they won't let him. Wow. Uh, they, it's crazy. Still testing positive. Oh, so, man. <laughs> yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought uh, just about 14 days, that's over. Yeah. yeah. He got his 15 day mm -hmm. and he's still testing positive. I seriously, like, I lost, like, all last week, I was just a waste. Yeah. Yeah. So now you now you probably have this pile. <laughs> well, and it's good because here in Michigan we're getting like 20 inches of snow today oh, and tomorrow. So it's every all business like real estate business is shut down. So it's total focus on catching up on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some of my uh colleagues they became positive too. And on different cases. Oh really? That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's it's wild. Hey, Carol Lee, how you doing? Doing good. I I saw your video. Can can you show your video off to the world for a second before we get started? Or you feel you feel okay with that? So we got a lot of people that are trying to get better at video. Am I gonna? Am I putting you on the spot? You're on you're mute. muted. <laughs> you're on you're on mute. Okay. <laughs> Hear you, you're on mute. I guess he's a little shy this morning, Lee. <laughs> Carol Lee, you are on mute. We cannot hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> how many how many there times do I have to press the button? I unmuted myself. <laughs> and most people would probably prefer that I remain muted, but that's a whole nother story. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me um boy you guys are in for a real humdinger i like the balls one better i gotta tell you yeah that one was that one was awesome too but okay this... so um share screen am i going to be permitted yep you can share a screen share okay i'm such an ignoramus in this regard so can you see my screen you can. yep okay yep so this is the video I just posted yesterday. It's the description that's even more funny, but can you hear? Whoop! Wrong way. Williams. Here we go. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for my clients. <laughs> Are you in the flip? This is great. Here's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. This is the best. I love it. Wow, this thing works pretty good, and I think I'm going to leave it to the professionals. <laughs> I don't want to ruin my boots. Ooh. And you should too. <laughs> that was great. So, Carol Lee, tell, well, me, tell me a little bit about your unique value proposition and how that tied in with the video. Uh, well, that's a bit of a problem because usually delay it lasts like five seconds, sometimes it's 10 seconds and I'm not see the somebody's talking. Right <laughs> is that me talking? Is, think, what's that, happening? No, no, what is happening? So, John, you, whoever, who's talking? Uh, the pilot oh. episode of 
let's hope it's serious. Where it might be the YouTube video thing. Oh, I see your YouTube channel. Yeah. It is because I closed the window. Stand by. Oh my gosh. See, this is why I don't do Zoom meetings. I don't actually host them. So stand by. You, like, just mute yourself out in the meantime. And we'll go back to you. There you go. Okay, cool. So we're going to set the stage for today's uh, meeting. Um, the goal, the goal of today's meeting, is we're going to break down um, your listing presentation, and we're going to look at what's going well with it and what needs to be worked on with it. And we have a process of by which we're going to do that. And then the goal is is to take action right now during this workshop and identify and make improvements. Does that sound good to everybody? So a couple couple agreements here is that we want to be make sure we we are open minded, um, not be too critical, but also be be critical about the things that we can work on. And I actually have my broker of uh, our broker of record and my partner Bobby Gall, who's uh, going to kind of help walk through this process. Where in a, every year we like to revamp our listing presentation. Sometimes every six months we'll look at it and uh, to, to make improvements. We're also opening up a very unique division within our brokerage um, where we're going to actually have, um, you know, a designated uh, virtual agent that's going to be doing virtual listing presentations all day. We're, uh, so we're kind of opening up a, a, something unique. So we're revamping ours anyway. So we're going to kind of go through a process of how we analyze our listing presentation. And uh, hopefully it's helpful to you and uh, provide you some tools along the way, which you can build, build out um, a really strong listing presentation if needed. Okay. So does everyone have something to write with? If you don't, please get something. All right. So get something to write with. And then uh, as the first action step, please go to your dashboard. So you can open up your dashboard and then drop in the chat when you're at your dashboard. Okay, so drop in the chat uh, that when you're at your dashboard. Okay, good. All right, next step is you're going to want to go to page 208. Okay, so you want to go to page 208. In the playbook. Uh, in the playbook. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So, yeah, you're going to want to click on the playbook. <laughs> yep. You're going to click on the playbook and then go to page 208 in the playbook. So, click on the play playbook and go to page 208. And I'll show you what it looks like on my end. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, um, we're gonna go through and kind of have, Bobby, are you, are you here today? I didn't see you pop up on my screen. Are you with me? I don't know, maybe he's not on yet. So, all right, so the first step is when we're, when we're you know, before we actually start the, the listing presentation, the, the first step we talked about last week is obviously um, the stage, which we're doing kind of like the grand tour or walking around. And our goal with our goal within doing that grand tour is um, identify or making sure that we're building really great rapport. And then we're identifying what their pain and motivation is. Um, and we talked about the Ford principle, uh, family, life, um, you know, sorry, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. If you're, how many people have heard of the Ford principle before here? Lee has, good. So one of the best ways to build rapport is to is focus, focusing on the Ford principle as you're doing that walk around. And um, we, and that's again, family, if you haven't heard of it before, talking about family, um, occupation, recreation and dreams and trying to relate, re relate to them. And here's what I want you to write down. A lot of us are aware of this, but we lose track of this. But the number one way to build rapport is to find common ground. And so, um, so what I want you to do is I want you to, and then, and then within that, I want you to score yourself on a scale of one to 10, how good you are at finding common ground and finding pain and motivation at your listing presentation on a scale of one to 10. Okay. So finding common ground. <clears throat> 
and let's have some open dialogue around this. What are some of the challenges? What are some of the things that maybe, uh, maybe you struggle with or that you think you're good at and what you do to help find common ground and um, and build rapport. Fairly smiling. Hey, Isaiah, can you hear me? Yep. So uh, I find for me, it's easier to find common ground than it would be to find that, that pain motivation. Um, for common ground, it could be just anything. Like I pay attention to like watches, ties, necklaces. Like I pay attention to like little detail things. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. I remember one time when I was like, I was prospecting, I was in like a particular business and I went to Maserati dealership that I had no business being in. <laughs> and um, I just started talking to this guy and he had this watch that I was familiar with. So we just started talking about the watch. And then <laughs> 10 minutes later, we were just driving around, you know, doing fun, crazy things in Maseratis. <laughs> um, yeah, so like for me, like I think like little things like that, um, I always like to let people open up with their, uh, I forget where I heard this, but like give people their five minutes. I think a lot of times we like interject too soon and like, oh, let me tell them about me. Let me tell them about me. Like me too, me too, me too. Like just let people talk, give them five minutes. They'll tell you everything. <laughs> and you'll find some, something in there. Like you said, like whether it's family or, um, or some relatable uh, profession or something like that. Um, and then with the um, pain motivation for me, I'm just, I'm highly optimistic. So when they mention that, I kind of just blow past it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's something for me to work on, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. So let's talk, let's talk about this. So something that will take you up to, um, like, let's say you're, you're, you have a cold lead that you're working, and I'm not talking about as much as referrals, but the stats I'm giving you are, are based on cold like a working a, a cold lead or so, a lead that you got from a geographical farm or from like an internet lead. But even this is important if somebody's referred to you too. Um, the, the, greatest, the greatest closers, the best closers that you'll see that are closing at a 70, 80, 90% closing rate. Okay, 60, whatever, you know, those real, real high percentages. They are phenomenal at really identifying what the pain and motivation is of that client at the very beginning taking notes on that, and then weaving that in to their whole presentation throughout their process, and then also closing and enrolling on that same pain and motivation. The difference between somebody who's, close, who's not getting the results that they want or getting some results, maybe because they have a good personality or a decent presentation, and somebody who is a killer somebody who's a killer closer somebody who is really rock solid uh and really great at getting that listing on the spot is what i just mentioned right there there's a whole lot of other things we can talk about you can have the most beautiful listing presentation in the world which we're going to talk about we're going to make sure we got we got that in present we, we can have all the structure but at the end of the day if we're speaking a different language if i'm speaking chinese to you how long would you guys hang on right now if you don't speak chinese maybe if you do right you'd under you know it would make sense but if i'm speaking a different language than you are it's it can be very frustrating and this process even though we're speaking the same language we're, we're not speaking the same language does that make sense folks so like if we're not speaking to what their needs are then we're not we're, we're not speaking the same language. They're not really listening or hearing it. Maybe on a surface level they are. So that's the difference. And I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Was that was that you, John? Did you bring that up? I'm sorry, I don't. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Pain motivation. Yep. Yeah. So more more than anything, and we're gonna drill down in the next part. We're gonna show you guys like how to customize your presentation and what should be in it, what shouldn't be, as we continue this exercise. But more than anything is really work on asking effective questions to draw out that information and then getting good at every part of your presentation consistently weaving in that information okay so does anybody need a further explanation on how to do that before we move on
I dropped a I dropped a scorecard uh, link in here that I'm going off of. You guys want to click on it and open it up. Um, you can print it out uh, or just take notes on it. But this is something that we use to grade our listing presentation uh, and also our process to see how well we're doing uh, for conversion to get better and to get our closing rates up. Okay. Um, so you guys can check that out. You can click on that and open that up. I'll make sure it's shared with the, uh, that. Uh, it is restricted. Hold on one second. Let me open it up to everybody. Okay. There we go. All right. Now everybody should be able to view it. All right. So um, those are things like, we, you know, so if you look at what we talked about, tone, pace, hesitation, modulation, mirroring, and matching. Okay. So here's what I want you guys to do. If you can open up a blank document. Okay. So go to your computer and open up a blank document. Okay. And I want you to title this your listing presentation script. Okay. Your listing presentation script. See what happens is we go and we build a listing presentation, but we're not building it around the psychology of the language that we need to use at the listing presentation. So would we agree that if our listing pre, if the language doesn't match the slides that we're using and they're not in sync with each other, okay, we could be missing out on opportunities. Would everybody agree with that? Okay. So it's really important actually to have, not to say that you're going to use the script and you're going to say the script word for word. It's very important that we have a script that we've written out and then we use that to build our, to kind of fine tune our listing presentation as a guide. I'm not a, you'll never see me reading a script or memorizing a script, but it needs to be a guide there to make sure the psychology is built into the process. By show of chat, if you agree with that and that makes sense to you, that that would be an important exercise to do, put, put it in the chat, and make sure you guys are following along with me, okay? So, um, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna open up a blank document, okay? So uh, give me a, uh, <clears throat> Give me, give me a big yes if you have your document open up. You're, you guys are ready to start writing, okay? If you guys are ready to start writing, okay? <laughs> All right, so write your, so in the, in the first section, okay, what I want you to do is write build rapport and qualify, okay? And I want you to start jotting some bullet points down and some notes of how you're, how you're at the door right now, okay? You're at the door right now. How are you opening up that conversation? Okay, and, and start scripting that out, how you're opening up that conversation. And um, Bobby, is there anything that you, I think you just joined us now, Bobby, is there anything you wanna add as we're, as we're writing before we move on? No, I think um, you've touched good points. I've been here probably for like 10 minutes, by the way. <laughs> okay, cool, sweet. So we're gonna, we're gonna, again, we've, these are implementation workshops. So we're not going to just sit here and train. We're going to actually do something. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stop talking for about five minutes. Okay. And um, we're going to, we're going to be here to help support each other. And I want you to write out what you're saying at the intro, all the way up through your, the questions that you're asking through your walkthrough. Okay. And um, I'll, be asking Bobby some questions back and forth for some dialogue, but does everybody have a clear, does every, is everyone clear on the action steps? Okay, we good? And please participate. Okay, that's the only way to, to maximize uh, our time here together. <clears throat> so Bobby, what, what are some, um, you know, as we're writing the script out on paper, <clears throat> what, what is maybe some opening, opening conversation that could happen at when we're at the door knock knock so knock. so it depends where you got the sleep from right so if you cold called yourself or an isa um set up the appointment for you if it's i've cold called it was like hey you know nice to put a um face to the name great to meet you in person if an isa set up the uh point i say hey my you know i believe you spoke to my team member you know angelica um it's, it's great to meet you. She mentioned a little about your situation, you know, um, and that that's how I start the conversation. Cool. And, and then what's your next, which, what does your script look like after that? So after that, you know, that's right at the door and then they'll usually open up, come on in, you know, 
I'm inside. And the only thing I told you guys last time I'll bring with me is my iPad. Um, and I'll say, hey, you know, before we do anything, can you just show me around your house uh, so I get a better idea of, you know, the upgrades you have done and, you know, better idea of the layout. Okay. And then that's the whole process where they'll start walking me throughout their house. That's the first thing I do every single time, regardless of, yep. you know. Now, if it's a cold lead, you might get some knee jerks here, right? You might get some people that are saying some pretty weird stuff. So we need to build that into our script. So um, if you, let's let's talk about what they might say. Like, oh, just give me, it's like one of them. Hey, just give me, yeah, just give me what you think my property's worth. Right. Just give me anyone ever hear that one before. Right. Like, yeah, just give me what you think my property's worth. So, you know, somewhere in your notes, right. Yeah, somewhere in your notes. Right. What's another one that we're going to hear at the door. You're on mute, Carly, if you're talking. What do you charge? Yeah. <laughs> What's your commission? Right. What do you charge? And you and I have a really great script on that one. Yeah, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> And we're going to go through these in a minute. We're going to write them down together. Okay. I just want to let you know that I'm interviewing three other agents. That's good. And I actually went to um, visit a uh, uh, Z buyer uh, lead uh, recently. And uh, when I introduced myself and although we built a report, but he basically told me that he was not comfortable showing me his home. So I'm not, another one, I'm not comfortable showing your home, showing you my home right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's write that one down. I use the, the tour of the home to identify what, what they are in the disc profile. You know, like if they've got a zillion photos of their family, then I'm going, you know, I have a, I have a children's listing presentation that I make kids sign and they have to post, I have to put something on their wall on, you know, the check off every day what the kids have to do to keep their room clean and things like that. And I engage the children. So, you know, like I kind of pay attention throughout the process to know if they have no kids and no pictures on their walls, for instance, then I'm not going to tell them I have a kid's listing presentation and that you, their kids need to be involved in this discussion. You know, like I'm very bossy. Your kids need to be involved in this discussion because they're part of this too. <laughs> so anyway, sorry. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. So let's uh let's map out the first one. What was the first one, guys? Hopefully we were taking notes. What was the first objection that we get right at the front door? I just want to know what my home's worth. Okay. So Bobby, how would you handle that one? I would say, of course, you know, I, I'd love to um, help you find out what that figure is, but it's kind of hard pricing, you know, a property uh, without taking, you know, a look through it. I got to see the updates you have done. I got to see the outdated stuff. So uh, let's, you know, let's walk through the house. You show me around because obviously you know where every nook and cranny is. Um, give me a tour of your house and then we'll sit down and uh, go over those figures together. Good. Awesome. Anybody else have any other language? Who agrees it's pretty good dialogue, right? Most of the time they'll let us walk through, right? So let's let's just take a minute and let's write that down. So let's. Can I, can I offer a different viewpoint? This Absolutely. is, this. I'm sorry, I can't seem to get my picture on and I'm not camera ready right now. Um, okay. So something I learned from, uh, I'm sure you've all heard about um, the guy that wrote the book, uh, never split the difference. Yep. And um, when I was in his coaching program with uh, a coach, um, he taught us not to go through the house right away. Um, and I am kind of an old fashioned kind of girl. And my grandma used to teach me that you never go into somebody's bedroom unless they've invited you because that is their most private space. And if you're getting these leads online, and of course you haven't built rapport yet, um, sitting down with them first and, and kind of just getting their anxiety out of their system by having a little idea of what they're trying to accomplish with you being there, um, kind of 
lets their anxiety, I, I tend to have anxiety. So kind of lets that anxiety evaporate a little bit before you're going through their most private spaces, their bathrooms, their bedrooms. And, and that kind of, I think, makes this a more gentler process. I, I deal with a lot of seniors and and so I'm dealing with a lot of more old fashioned kind of people that are, you know, they're not used to having someone like us just walking through their house and looking at everything and opening closets and stuff like that. So anyway, I will be quiet now. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it because there are a lot of ways to um, catch a fish, right? So you, there's different, different lures, different, and I just to give an analogy. So go ahead, Curly, what are you going to say? Uh, I was just, you know, on that, that uh, aspect of it, if it's a referral, I tend to start with the tour because, you know, I've been referred and, and I already know I have the listing essentially, or, in, I mean, it's up to me to screw it up at that point. But if it's a colder lead, um, I generally like to sit down with them. And that's what I say is, you know, uh, like at the door, I, you know, of course I say, hey, you know, it's it. The, we had a 10 o'clock appointment. It's 10 o'clock. I'm here. Uh, it's so great to meet you in person. Why don't we find a place we can sit down, chat and uh, just get to know your needs and wants and uh, concerns and answer any questions you have. And then let's go take a tour of your house. And then, you know, they're either comfortable or they're not. So I kind of give them the schedule on what that in meeting is going to look like. That's good. That's good. It's a great opportunity to find some of the, some of the needs and wants or otherwise pain and motivation. So, um, and that will help you with your tour. It'll, it'll, it'll help you with the process. So it's good. So yeah, a lot of, and, and you'll hear this coach very differently. Um, I think the most important thing is to make sure that you're building rapport and that you're qualifying, whether you choose to find that better for you to do the walk around right away or to sit down at the table. Um, those are the things that you got to want to, you know, those, those things that you want to test for yourself. I think a lot of this, what I picked up and, and is really important. A lot of this is situational depending on the lead type, right. Um, and your, in your situation. So this is really great dialogue guys uh, and ladies. Yeah. What, what if you ask them, you know, especially if it's someone that you don't know, that's not a referral. Like, what do you like the most about your house? What, what's your biggest dislike of your house? And then that way they'll open up about it. And then that'll, that'll lead to a tour uh, shortly after. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, having a list of questions that you are asking is so important to your point, Lee. So just, just check your, how confident do we feel in our questions that we're asking? So, so should we, should we, we probably should script that out then, right? Okay. So we're going to get to that in a minute. I don't want to skip too far ahead. I want to make sure we get our objections hammered out first, because we'll, if we don't have good scripts to get past those. We're not going to get to the table or if we do get to the table, they're not going to, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, it could, it could be a little all over the place. So Bobby, you were going to say something before we, we go on to the next objection. Yeah. Just to add on to what you were saying and what Lee was saying, um, essentially if, we're either cold calling them, we're having an IC cold call them, it's a referral, whatever it is, we've set up the appointment because they want to know what their house is worth. And if it's tomorrow or if it's six months from now, they want to sell their house. Their house is the product. So that's why I personally feel that me asking for a tour isn't really too outrageous because that's the reason I'm there is to sell your house. It's I don't find sugarcoating there or anything, you know, I just feel like it prolongs the process. Another thing why I ask for a um, tour of the house is I feel they don't really know you 100%. So if you sit down at a table, their guard goes up. But if you were, we're walking around their house and, you know, uh, just like somebody over here said, they have a listening presentation for a child. See, the only way you pick up on that stuff is if you're walking through their house. So throughout the process, I'll always make connections. I'll compliment them. And that's where I'm building rapport. So when we do sit at the table in, you know, five, 10 minutes, I've already built that rapport and, you know, their, their guard is a little less up. And throughout that process, I'm asking my qualifying questions. Hey, you got a beautiful house. Why are you selling? You know, are you looking for more space? Um, I see you have a bunk bed here. 
is that why you're selling is you want each child to have their own bedroom or, you know, whatever that situation is. And while they're showing you their house, I feel like their guard is less up. So for me and my process, that's crucial that I get those pinpoints and, you know, just get into their house and see what their whole lifestyle is about. Awesome. It's a great dialogue. Um, and um, I think that it's, a, again, and thanks for sharing. I think it's good to have different perspectives so we can all learn together who agrees, right? That's how we get better is looking at different perspectives. So that's really good. And I'm glad that Pete, we're open enough to share each other's points of view so we can look at this 360. So uh, yes, we got to move on, but go ahead quick. Uh, I'm just speaking to that, that I don't even know if it's two different points of view. I think it can often be client specific. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I, I know where I, I can kind of see where, where, yeah, let it, it could, it could definitely, it definitely could be client specific. Um, next point. So what's the next objection? What do you charge? What do you charge? How do you answer this? I personally say, you know, the standard in my market is this or, you know, what, whatever it is in your market, but commissions are negotiable and I don't know how much marketing, but, you know, budget I have to spend on your house. So after the tour, you know, it'll give me a better idea of what, what I have to do to sell this house. And then we will discuss that, you know, right after our tour. Cool. So let's just take a minute to get some language on paper. So go to your paper where, where you've written down and let's get, make sure we get some good language here. <clears throat> If you have your, you should have your document. We should have our document up typing. And uh, by show chat, let me know when you guys feel like you got that written. You got that written down. And of course, if there's other angles that people want to share, go ahead and share it. But we want to get all this on paper so that way we're able to build out a really strong process and map it over to our presentation. <clears throat> Plus, how many people want to build a team someday? Okay. If you want to build a team, this needs to be on paper, <laughs> right? You need to be able to hand them something. So if this isn't for you, you're not doing this for you right now, do it for your team, right? Get this on paper for your team. <clears throat> Uh, Susan, could you expand on that a little bit? Can others share their examples of what the, they say at the at this point? You mean like uh, after that objection? Sure. Or, yeah. No, yeah. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is um, just a question or objection that I really don't have solid for a really good answer. And I was hoping to hear various approaches Um kind of so far kind of have done the same thing. Well, it's negotiable and it, you know, that this and that, but I don't feel really solid about that. So I would love to hear like one or two different approaches of how to answer that. Go ahead. I think that ultimately um, that that's a, there's, there's two sides to that answer. Um, the first one is, you know, if somebody just comes out with, like, because when you started this, you talked about objections. It's kind of like the first thing they ask you when you walk in the door is a totally different thing than during the course of your listing presentation, they ask you, you know, what you charge. So ultimately, if it's like they just want you walk in the door and all they want to know is what your commission is, I'd say, hey, I'd love to sit down with you and we'll go over that. I mean, it's simple as that. But if it's in the course of your listing presentation and you're discussing your commission or they're asking you what you charge, I mean, then you should already have a plan and scripts. There's a zillion scripts out there in the universe on how you should respond to that. Um, I certainly have something that, you know, that's ultimately very different than most people, um, which I'm glad to share it at some point, but anyway. Did that help? Isaiah, what I usually say is, um... I would glad, it's a great question. I'll be glad to answer it once we've agreed on the price that you want to list your house tonight at. 
Oh. That's a good one. That's a that's an assumptive close, buddy. Yeah, that's Love what I just. Can you just me. say that again? Let everybody hear <laughs> that, that again. That's a great question. I'll be glad to answer it once we've agreed um, on the price you want to list your house tonight at. Oh, that's good. So that's that's a great question. Um, say it one more time. Sorry. Okay, so it's um. I would glad to let you know, but let's first see what price you're going to list your house at tonight. Cool. Great. All right. Um, do we feel like we got a good framework for handling this knee jerk in the beginning? We good? We go ready to move on? All right. What do we got next? What's the next one we hear that we wrote down? Next objection that we're hearing right, right as we're in the kind of in the front door. I'm interviewing three other agents. Who wants to handle this one? I know Bobby's got a good response for this one. <laughs> go ahead Bobby so I don't see I'm you know interviewing other agents as an objection I just see that as you know a note to myself like hey Bobby get your shit together and start poking holes in other agents stories right so I'm like oh cool you know who, who are you who are you interviewing if you know you don't mind me asking and it's I turn into a casual conversation like I'm just curious but it's not you know, um, like a big deal. Yeah, that's, that's fine. You know, I would have probably done the same thing if I were selling my house. Who are you interviewing? And then, oh, did they already come out or are they coming out after me? Right. That's important to see. Um, and I'll just go into a whole dialogue and I'll just ask questions. Did they give you a price on the house already? If you already interviewed them, how much did they say the house was worth? Did they say that you need any repairs? Right. So if they say, yeah, he said I need to fit, fix the roof or this or that. Now I now I have, you know, an agent I could agree with because I want to lower the price or whatever. So interviewing other agents isn't always a bad thing. And with all of these objections, I don't know if anybody here um, goes in the morning uh, cold calling training sessions, but it, objections in person or on the phone, it's very similar. And I love the Columbo effect. Right. So whatever objections they have, we will go over it during my listing presentation. So the Columbo effect is basically, you give them, a, Isaiah, you'll explain it better. You're the one who came up with the whole Columbo effect dialogue. Yeah, so, yeah, so basically what you do is you, um, you, you never, you never want to like, you never want to break rapport. So basically in this instance, um, you say, oh, great. That's like, you don't want it to ever come across like, you're upset at what they're doing or you you're like don't agree with what they're doing so you always want to maintain agreement <clears throat> so it would sound something like this okay great that's that's great that you're interviewing uh other other agents you know it's it's a you know if i was selling my house house i might do the same thing if i didn't have my license and then what you do is you go into your questions because what i did is i dropped their guard they're expecting me to like they're they're testing me in a way and there's this pu push and pull and so no matter what they say to you, you can actually, you don't have to, you don't ever want to disagree with them because you'll break rapport immediately. Uh, but what you do instead is you try to show empathy. You put yourself in their shoes. And then what you do is now that they've let their self, their guard down and this, the idea of you ever watched the show Columbo, he was a private investigator and he would ask a ton of questions and then he'd pretend like he was leaving. And then he'd ask what he'd come back and turn around and he asked, he'd ask the killer question. And it was that question that proved the person who he's interviewing was, um, was, was, uh, the, you know, what did the crime or whatever. It was the killer question. And so it's kind of like the same psychology here where it's like, now their guards down. They're not like all like, Oh, well this, you know, this person is like, Oh, they they're relating to me and they're, they're confident enough, enough in themselves to, have me interview other people. Who is this person? And now that they're kind of more relaxed, then I'm going to come out with those questions that um, Bobby just mentioned. 
Yeah. And just out of curiosity, um, you know, um, no. I didn't have a chance to interview them already. Okay, great. Like, um, did they give you a price? What did you think about the price they gave you? What was their recommendations? Now you're going to be able to get all this information because you set up the first part of that conversation the right way. And now they're going to, now they're going to give you more likely to give you the information in order to keep the conversation moving on. Is that kind of what you're talking about, Bobby? Is what yeah, that's at? exactly what I'm talking about. And just to add on that, you acknowledge their question. You don't answer it 100%, but then you start asking questions. And who asks the questions <coughs> is the person in control. So you always want to ask questions. Yep. And that means you're controlling. Show me the, your house, please. Like, give me a tour. You're in control. Great. What did the other agent tell you? You're in control. You always want to be in control. You always want to steer them in one point or another to get the deal closed. So I'm interviewing other eight, three other agents. Um, hopefully we've got, you know, four or five questions written down there. So we know where to go and then we're going to get that information and we're going to use that information later on. Okay. All right. Yes. Go ahead, Curly. Um, I'm just curious uh, if, uh, you know, in my 30 years in this business, I rarely get an answer to that question as to, did they give you a price? People always want you to like, you know, like if they gave a price of 800 and you price it at 850, they're more inclined to list with you or you come in so low, they're going to go list with them kind of thing. So they don't actually answer that question. So how do you actually get it out of them? Really good. So you, you don't ever want to ask them if they gave a price. You want to you want to say, oh, so great. And part of the process, what price did they give you? And usually from my experience, I find out that the price they give you is usually above even what the agent is saying because they think, oh, this. And, you know, I, I just take that in. Right. I don't I don't say anything. I'm like, oh, OK, you know, that, that sounds good. Did they show you how they came up with that price? That's my next question. How did they come up with that price? Did they give you that price on the first day they came? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. How can they price your house without them taking a tour of your house first? You know, with, how are they getting their data? So now I'm just poking holes in their story and another agent and they start questioning. Right. Um, and then that's my whole process with, you know, their other agent is I'll ask him multiple questions about that agent. And then without saying, oh, that company sucks or I'm better or this or that. How would they price your house without taking a look at it or whatever that question is? Good. Great dialogue, guys. So are we starting to see how important the very first phase is? That if we don't get step one right, it can really mess up the rest of it. And so a lot of us are so focused on rushing past this building rapport and qualifying phase at the at the presentation and getting into the meat and bones of it. And sometimes don't get me, you know, don't get me wrong. Some of this is a little situational, like we talked about. But as a rule of thumb, is if is we got to get really good at step one, really freaking good. If you look at the best list, the the top listing agents, they are phenomenal at, at building rapport and qualifying. All these things we're talking about. They know how to handle that knee jerk objection. They know how to keep rapport going. They know how to ask the right questions. They got the tour down. They're really good at that. So now if these people have like and trust and that's there, their guards down, and now you can actually have an effective conversation. That's why this is so important. You'll One of your unique value propositions will be this first step, how they feel about you going into the next step. So um, we're, we got to keep moving here. Hopefully we can get to the next part past objections. So was there any other objections on our list that we needed to cover? Uh, yes, there was the last objection in terms of uh, when they are uh, not uh, willing to show you their home. So I'm, I don't feel comfortable showing you my home right now. Um. So that objection, again, ask questions, take, take control over. Hey, I understand, not a problem, right? That Colombo effect, you agree with them. I understand, not a problem. If you don't feel comfortable, we don't have to do that. 
but just out of curiosity, why is that? If you if you're thinking about selling your house, you're obviously going to have to open your house up to you know the public, strangers. Why is that? Oh, it's not clean. Oh, you know, um, it's dirty. Oh, my kids are you know sleeping in their room, and then I always try to throw some humor in there. If they're like, oh, it's not clean. Oh man, you didn't see my house this morning. Like, and I'll I'll just you know try to lighten up the mood or hey, my kids are sleeping. My baby, you know, she's been crying all, all night and. I just put her to sleep. Okay, not a problem. Can we still, you know, just so I can get a general idea of the house, can we tour it without going into that room? Or, hey, my bedroom is a mess. Okay, no, not a problem. Let's not go into your bedroom. But can I see, you know, the basement, the furnace and all that without, you know, going into your bedroom? So I will somewhat compromise for them just to get a, you know, um, make them feel better. But throughout the report, you know, if you're building right rapport, those objections will go down. And I've had it where it goes from, hey, I don't want you going into my bedroom and we're taking a tour of the house and I've built such a rapport. They're like, well, we're here anyway. So they'll just open up their door without me even asking. Yep. But the key is, is to make sure that you're showing that empathy. You're, you're, you're staying in agreement with them and showing that empathy. And then you're coming back to a, a question and response. If you didn't do the empathy part the right way, Okay, they're it's going to be harder to deliver that response. They're going to be more open to what you say if they know you're relating to them first. And it may be that you have a seat on the couch, not at the table, and you just sit down and build rapport and don't push them through the process. Let them they may be the they want to be the driver, you know, so you've done something not to have that report for them to feel comfortable about you being there. And now it's time for you to sell yourself and find the common ground. Great. Yeah. Great suggestion. Well, cool. so we should have an opening statement. We should have had a frame. We have a framework how to overcome some of these, what I call knee jerks. They're not really objections, but they're things that just happen. Um, and then now what, now what we're doing is we're starting to get through to the point where we're going to be doing a walk around and we're going to be asking them questions to continuously find um, find uh, pain motivation and continue to build common ground, okay? So let's go back to our script and let's write out what what's a tra what's a transitional statement that we can we can say or use to start that walk through once we've gotten past some of these things that we're going to run into. Do you want me to go? Yeah. Whoever. All right. So the way I start the walkthrough is, again, we're asking questions, get over the knee jerks. And then it's, hey, it's your house. Show me your house as if you're showing it to a buyer that's that you're going to walk through. Show me, you know, point out all the small details that you have done. Point out the big details. Just give me a tour of the house. And if I have any questions, you know, um, I'll obviously bring those up. Anybody else have anything else you'd like to add? As we're Maybe writing, you could say something like, "So I can best prepare for the listing description of your upcoming listing. Uh, can you please take me through and explain um, in detail what's you know all the specifics of every room?" Another great assumptive close. Love it. That, yeah. That's awesome, Lee. Yeah, so we, um, if you, if you, and this is another reason why the scripting is so important, because we want to have the what are what are called uh, the, these assump these assumptive closes kind of built in, and you're, we're also going to get some agreements. We're going to map this out, so we're getting them to agree with us throughout the process. So between the assumptive closes and the agreements that are happening, right, and we're building rapport, we're we're. Um, we're, we're get, number one, we're, we're handing a lot of the objections, but we're, we're, by the time you get to the end of this, it makes the enrollment so much easier because you have assumptive closes along the way and you have agreements that you've gotten from them all along the way that it, it's more of a natural process now to enroll them. And it feels less like a close and you're actually just going to the next step of the process. So this is why it's so important to script this out to make sure that those things are in there. Yeah, go ahead, Curly. Yeah. 
I know that you want to move through this, but this just came into my mind. Um, I have, I'm a high eye. I'm a big talker and I have to work much more at using those and not that. Uh, and, um, one thing that I learned, um, at, uh, from Ben Kinney that is so stinking brilliant and that you guys might want to consider is, you know, after you've kind of entered the home and established, you know, like a super nice introduction, whatever that looks like, you might want to say, hey, are there any specific questions uh, that you would like to have answered? Uh, you know, essentially uh, before we list your home today, like, because here's one of the funny things is I have like I have been in listing appointments where I go through my entire spiel and they're just like, what, where's the paperwork? I had already closed them by my communication over the phone in advance. And I was just there to go take the listing and I didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just want to ask, Hey, is there anything that would prevent you from listing with me this evening? Or are there any questions? Not, not that one, but, um, you know, if you have any questions that you'd like answered before we list your home, but before you do the paperwork, I mean, seriously, and somebody's like, oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you know where you're at. So it's kind of a, it's great psychology. He's got the scripting better than me. I, um, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there that I think it's a super interesting strategy because I've talked myself out of a listing before. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that, you know, let's make sure for those of us that like that question, build that into your script right now. Go in there and find find a place for it to be in there. And again, Carly, thanks for the reinforcement because this is reinforcing my point of why it's so important to have a script. Because all these things that we learn, if we don't have them written down and have our process down, right, then everything, and we don't kind of have, have a roadmap or memorize this, even though it's going to be different for every situation, but these, all these little things make a huge freaking difference whether we get that listing or not. Would we agree? Right? So it's- And I a, do have that script somewhere if you would like it. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so we're about out of time today. Just so you guys know, um, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to go through this process uh, all the way from the very end to when we're getting the contract. So make sure you guys show up next week. And we're going to continue to script it, script that out the rest of this uh, next week and the week after. So a action step for today is script out as much of this you can, as you can based on our conversation so far. And I'm going to ask you guys to share. Uh, I don't need to read it, but just share that you've done it and got it done um, between now and next week. So that way we can keep building on this. And if you're... Uh, I guess if you're an overachiever, keep going down through and take a look at the seven steps that are in the workbook and on that sheet, that sheet that I sent you in this link, and just use that as your guide, specifically the first five, and start scripting out the rest of it. And what this will do for you, you will, you will create a multi-million dollar listing presentation and script that then anyone who comes on your team and for yourself you can use to train to, it can be your guide, you keep tweaking it and you keep getting better and better. And that's how you go from being a good closer to being a great closer is this process that we're working on together, okay? This is how, the, this is how you build a multi-million dollar sales process, what we're doing here. So please don't take it for granted. Um, if you need to go back and watch this video, um, again, uh, John Lehman, actually, if we could close off by, uh, dropping a survey link. We want your feedback on today's session. And then uh, John, if you could just give them a quick tour uh, on how to find the recordings if they want to go back and listen to this uh, in the academy, that we that would be great. And if you're not there, I will do it. Just let me know uh, if you're listening. I'm always here. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So survey link and then show them how they can get the recording if they want to go back and listen. Yeah, is, there, is, is there a way that we could all share? I think that everyone would benefit if we all shared together too. So is there any way that we could create a Google link and everyone can share their, what they've written down and then yeah. we can um, all like collaborate, maybe a couple of us can collaborate and come up with a perfect listing, listing uh, presentation. 
absolutely. I have um I have something called the listing domination secrets folder. Um, I will share that folder with you. It's actually in the it's actually in the academy. We'll show you how to find it, and you guys can put your files in there, and we can collaborate. Does that sound good with every? That sound good to everybody? I think that's great because you know I think that if if ten people add five percent of high quality content then that could turn a 90% presentation into, you know, hundred percent and really knock someone's socks off. Yeah. I love it. Great idea. So John, if you could show them to, uh, or uh, yeah, so show them how to find the recording and then I'll, I'll guide everybody where to find uh, the listing domination toolkit uh, drive. So. Sure. Uh, and speaking so, of that last, oh, sorry, John, uh, last week, uh, the, the Bobby did a great uh, listing presentation um, I went and checked and it's still not posted yet. Can we please get that posted? I think you did a presentation uh, last Wednesday. I, I think she might you. I believe that was posted today because um, a few people had brought that up as well. I'll show you okay. where I'll show you Then where I'll to, check again. Thank you. I'll show you where to find it quick too. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you ready, John? All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do, guys, is we're going to want to go to dashboard.realestatenexus.io. So we want to make sure we're on our dashboard. And then from within this page right here, you're going to want to click on the REN Sales Academy. So dashboard and then REN Sales Academy tab. Once you're in the REN Sales Academy, you've got access to your sales and marketing secrets, master classes up top. And then you'll see a section that says daily group training. There's the open technology work in sessions that we do from 1115 to 1215, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can click to join or click to watch the recordings. And then same thing for the training that Isaiah and I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which would be this course right now. You can click here to join live when we're up and running, or you can click here to view the recordings. And what that'll do is it'll take you to a private YouTube page with all of the recordings. So this was last Wednesday's recording. It's uh, very similar to the game plan uh, that. Okay, as you can see here. And then you also have live prospecting and role play where you can click to join live and click to view the recordings. Okay, so step one dashboard. Step two, Sales and Marketing Academy tab, and then click here for recordings under the daily group coaching section. Awesome. You scroll down, uh, down at the, all the way down to the resource section. Uh, if it's There's the listing presentation. For those of you that wanted to see Bobby's listing presentation he went over yesterday. Uh, resource Thank section. You. Yep, you're welcome. It literally just got added a couple hours ago. So this is kind of an outline. You guys can take it and make it make it your own. And we'll be referencing back to this through out the process. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next thing is we want to show you the file for the listing domination toolkit. So John, if you could go back to uh, the dashboard. And where it says REN Sales and Marketing Toolkit. And you can get to this toolkit either through this the Academy or right from this link here. Either one is will work for you. If you need a login and your login's not working, just go to rensupport.com. And if you want to get it knocked out right away, um, we can even stay after and do a breakout with you here to get your login. This is a very, uh, you know, for, for a lot of you, this is going to be a very uh, helpful resource. What we do is we develop all of the marketing materials that you need uh, to then take and be able to customize. So we do, we do a newsletter template for you. We do social media posts, a lot of other cool stuff. And uh, in here, I believe, is the bonus. If you click on, uh, let's see. Video marketing postcards. Did she move the tool? Uh, 
There it is. Okay. So when you click on the introduction, you'll see where it says listing domination toolkit. Okay. Go there. And you guys can drop all of your, you can drop your, your files in here. We'll go ahead and create one called listing presentation script. If you don't mind doing that real quick, John, now, um, just while we're in here. And everybody can drop their script in here so we can collaborate. And uh, Bobby and I, like we said, we're, re we're revamping ours too and making sure that we're getting a script for our team. So you'll be able to see ours in here as well. Yep. And then um, just to add on to that, I say uh, the one I have is, you know, branded towards my team as well. Um, so we're having one made that's going to be editable. So everybody can put their own logos and whatever and, you know, make it their own. Awesome. That's great. Okay, um, drop in the chat what your big takeaway was for today. What'd you get out of today? And what are you gonna, what are you gonna, what's your action step from it? Or if you wanna talk about it too, that's cool too. Colombo, implement. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Uh, have a script together, not only for yourself, but your future team. Uh, Carol Lee said assumptive closes. Yep. Awesome. Good. I think confidence is always so important too. And yeah, you know. yes. We're going to do a whole training on that too, by the way, how to make sure to, once we get this all mapped out, we're going to circle back around. I'm glad you mentioned that Lee. We're going to talk about how to get ourselves in the right peak state of mind to make sure we feel that we feel unstoppable going into that listing presentation. Because yeah, if you, you can memorize all the scripts in the world, but if, you're, if your delivery shows a lack of confidence, then yeah. you lost. Yep, that's right. Cool. All right, if you guys would, uh, if you guys would click on that, link for me and just give us some feedback. We want to get better and just let us know how today's um, work session went. That'd be great. And if I could get your help with something, go into that private Facebook group on my post today that I, when I asked people if they wanted to see the listing presentation, um, and if you don't mind just posting a positive comment out of something that you learned uh, from today's session, you'll see we're still live in it right now. <laughs> so if you could post something on there, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, we have literally almost a thousand clients now, and uh, we want to encourage them to come to these sessions so they can get the most out of out of what we're doing here. Okay, so I'd appreciate your help on that. Um, and other than that, do you guys have anything else before we end? Good. All right, so the um, Friday, if you're looking to build a team, Brian Curtis is gonna be talking about how to hire an admin, um, all the things that go into a team, looking at metrics, uh, the different things we need to do to make sure that we're extremely profitable as we build a team. So make sure you show up on Friday at 12, 15. Other than that, you guys are awesome. I really enjoyed today's session. And uh, Thanks, yep, thank you. Have a good rest of the day, guys. Thank you. Good rest of the day, ladies. Bye-bye.